Hi, I'm Wayne Robinson, editor of Australian Printer Magazine, and we're here in Homebush on a beautiful Sydney day to have a look at the Visual Impact Image Expo exhibition, which is on here because they're knocking Sydney's Darling Harbour down. So, let's go inside and check it out. Hey, I'm here with uh, Dale Hawkins from Canon, Australia. We're at the uh, Visual Impact Image Expo show, and uh, Dale's going to tell me what he's got on display here from Canon Nostar. Yeah, thanks, Wayne. Uh, yes, today we have uh, the Arizona 660 GT. Uh, this is the uh, first first showing of this product uh, and its release here in Australia. Uh, we're excited to show it. It adds uh, more flexibility to the Arizona in uh, that it adds uh, varnish printing. Uh, you can do faster white or you can actually do uh, smoother colours if you add extra cyan and magenta. So Dale, why would someone buy this new 660 Arizona GT? Well, you know, uh, I, the nice thing about the Arizona is uh, that it allows you to produce uh, print to rigid substrates digitally and you know these days there's enormous demand to turn around work very quickly so the Arizona will allow you to do that and also you know they want to do that without compromising quality and Arizona is still the benchmark in flatbed quality so what we're finding is you know a lot of the print industry that used to make uh, point of sale through analog processes uh, looking to move towards digital to uh, you know allow them to deliver shorter runs much faster and the Arizona does that perfectly. This is the new Arizona 660 GT so um, you know it's moving on the successful uh, line of Arizonas that uh, we've been selling in Australia now for six years but what the 660 does is it adds just more flexibility to uh, what the customers can do with Arizona. And the, the way it does that is we actually have six dedicated ink lines now. So uh, it gives you the flexibility of using varnish. You can put in double white for faster printing, or you can add more cyan and magenta for smoother images as well. So, you know, it really gives flexibility around what the printer wants to try and achieve with a flatbed printer. And in terms of its throughput, how does that work in terms of square meters per hour and that kind of thing? Yeah, so, you know, with the Arizona, I mean, there is a number of uh, throughput speeds. It depends on the quality okay, you're yeah. trying to get out. But, um, you know, we like to quote production speed, so it's around 40 square meters an hour. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of things that contribute to productivity, and yeah, sometimes yeah. people can get caught up in the whole print speed yeah. rather than, you know, what it like to change a board over, etc. The thing that's really important for um, the Arizona is that we just do not want to compromise on the quality. You know, we believe that, you know, first and foremost, people want the best possible quality they can get. So, uh, you know, for us it's a mixture of getting the best quality with production speeds that will deliver a positive financial outcome for the, for the customer. Well, normally you would think that uh, people in the print industry would buy uh, flatbed printing, and that, and that is true of course, but what we're finding now, Wayne, is that uh, there's more and more uh, other industries in different segments that are starting to look at flatbed as either, uh, you know, a component of what they do, and to give you an example, so a glass printer, sorry, a glass manufacturer oh, yeah. will actually buy one of these printers to add graphics to their glass. Um, and more and more you see this used in uh, interior design, so, you know, in uh, office fit-outs or even now in some of the penthouses that they're making, you know, around uh, the country. And so is, for a, would a commercial printing company buy this or a, uh, a white corner trade house? Well, uh, you know, it started off primarily in that, um, if you call it a wide format trade house, you yeah. know, so people that were focusing on display or exhibition yeah. or even point of sale, yeah. so the screen printer that previously did it through analog methods. Yeah. But what we're finding also is that uh, people in the offset print space are trying to provide their customers with uh, all the things they need in print. Yeah. So they're now starting to look at uh, introducing yeah. flatbed printers to their Because business. they have, they've got the customers, they've got the files, they've got the color management skills, so all they need is the output device, really, isn't it? Well, they do, and yeah. you know, and the nice thing about this part of print is that, you know, there's predicted growth. Can they work? Uh, at a time when a lot of, you know, print, uh, you know, is quite flat. So, you know, they're also trying to uh, find new things to sell to their current customers, Arizona? but they're also looking for an area of growth to move into and uh, you know therefore flatbed printing in the Arizona really is fitting well. Uh, and and uh, is Arizona still the top selling 
high price actually in the country? It is. It's kind of, ah, okay. Uh, you know, it depends on how you carve up the pie okay. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. But in that medium volume uh, flatbed printing, you know, the Arizona is okay. completely. And is this 660 GT available now? It is available now, okay. so oh, okay. uh, meaning that we can sell you one. No, no, thank you. Yeah, no, I'm one. talking with Conrad Burkett from Roland DG, and I'm asking him, Conrad, what are you showing at the show here from Roland's perspective? We've got quite a few applications here. We've um, got our very, very popular new range of Pro 4 printers. Um, they've just been going gangbusters right. in the market. They were the ones that launched the pack print. Pack print, and, and actually the last Probably visual impact yeah, we right, had yeah. the, uh, the, the XR printed cut yeah. model, um, and, and, and globally even that thing was just amazing numbers. And why are people buying it? Really, it's just speed, solution, everything just works. It really hits a sweet point in the, the cost, low cost of operating, um, great results, you know, with the light flat inks, that kind of thing. It yeah. really allows us to produce true photographic results. So whether you're doing canvases, photo paper, yeah. or traditional durable graphics, car wraps, that yeah. kind of thing, and the speed. Yeah. A lot of people are running those machines on, on uh, self adhesive vinyls, PVCs, on photo papers, 20 plus square metres an hour. And then we jump to the XF, the print only one, that, that was the one at that factory. Yeah. Um, that thing also, the same number of just spiking sales, um, guys are running those things for their banner work, 40 odd square metres, 60 square metres now is their normal production. It really is. You probably recall at the last show, we, we fire it up every now and then here. It'll basically either roll in about an hour. Okay. So, you know, you can really get the work. So, you've got the volume with printer. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and a lot of our customers, they're, they're great. They're world customers. Yeah. So, the workflow that they're currently been running with their earlier rolling product, you drop it in, and everything's basically the same except for things running on steroids. And is Roland still doing its uh, kind of lifetime training and support? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so we, we've got our Roland Care program. That's it. Um, so every Friday we have the yeah. clinics. People can yeah. make a booking, come into our offices free time. Yeah. You might be trying to get a profile working or you're having troubles with an application or you just want some advice on adding a new application to your business. So we'll happily go through that. Yeah. We've got the Academy training days uh, still running. And, and yeah, most people are on our three to five year warranty program. So, yeah, and are you well. seeing, uh, in terms of uh, applications and business development, are you seeing any trends in the market? Uh, is there a trend to, to, to soft signage? To, you know, where, where are people yeah, look, making money? Soft signage, money? people are, are yeah. certainly interested in yeah. it. Um, for a lot of people, it's, it still can be fairly complex. Um, you know, there's different ways that you can do it. I mean, currently we have a lot of people doing soft signage with our eco product. products. Okay. There's a lot of great fabrics, and on one of our machines here, you can see it hanging around the base of it. Um, you can print straight onto the fabrics with the eco solvents or with the UV product. UV is just great for doing that kind of work. Great dense prints, uh, as is the eco solvent. So in those cases, they can print straight to it, and you've got yourself a, a flag or a banner. All right. And what about in terms of niche markets where people can make a bigger margin than in general commodities? Well, I mean, quite a few people are, are talking this up, and, and, it, and it, it really is a great thing to get into, and that's some of the interior design and decoration. Okay, that's time to take off. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, our, our inks, our EcoSol Max and EcoSol Max 2, the Green Guard certified, which means, you know, low lowest VOC uh, emissions, yes. safe for kindergartens, hospitals, independently UL certified. So really, you can you can pump out those great wall graphics for child centres, hotels, in the hospitals, all that kind of stuff. We've got some great reposi reposition of fabrics that you can print to for walls, uh, very low cost PVC or PVC free. Very easy to apply, and, and yeah, you can really make a room or, or an office or a place. And in terms of the media, do you supply it, or do you have uh, look at our, our channels. Our channels provide it. Okay. They've got a huge range. Okay. Um, all the usual uh, great suspects, if you like, of the media providers that have it out there. You know, the 3Ms, the Averys, the MacTax, and, 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 and a myriad of other people. Um, you know, there's huge compatibility with our inks and, and with the VersaWorks. There's literally thousands of profiles available straight off the shelf that you can upload in and get up and running with. It sounds like you're trying to make things as easy as possible for... It's all yeah, about the workflow. Yeah. You, know, you don't want people having to sit down, spend hours trying to make colours, tune colours. You just want to get it in, get the job in, get it, get it out. That's what it's all about. So make the workflow simple, fast turnarounds.
Pies were at Tottenham. And then in terms of hardware, we talked about the XF. What else have you got here? Um, look, we've got the, the Versa UV is another yeah. one. That, um, that's a really popular product. It, it's, it's been on the market now for about 18 months. Lots of units out there. Yeah. It's fitting that sweet spot. Um, people that aren't ready to jump in full on flatbed and all the expenses with heads and the really big lamps. Uh, and again, it's the same workflow and the three year warranties on the lamps, the heads, photographic results. Um, we've got one customer who's just taken out nine awards in the International PIA Awards. Um, a company called um, actually Armstrong Q Body of Works. Um, they took out nine awards this year, including the Best of Show, which is from over 3,000 entries around the world. Last year they took out eight, including again Best of Show, Best of World. So two years in a row using Versa UV technology and also some of our dye software motion uh, for one, one of those awards. So great results for that particular company. So you've got the XF, you've got the 6, you've got the Versa yeah, UV. Yeah, you've got the VS. Um, world's most popular print and cut machine. That's that's just going gangbusters uh, for that mid-tier yeah. entry level. Why is it? Why is it? World's most popular? Again, you know, it's just simple to use. It has all the features: whites, metallics, increased circulation to keep the costs to an absolute minimum with our specialist inks. It prints and it cuts, and yeah, really good price point for speed. Easy to use. Lots of profiles. Easy for people to get their work done. It's a very positive picture. Look, it's, it's good at the moment. Vibrant market. Alright, well, thanks very much for your Thank time. Thank you. Hey, I'm with uh, Terry Crawford from Epsom, and uh, we're on the Epsom booth. Terry, uh, what are you showing here at the show? Oh, wait, um, we're showing our sign and display products. Uh, uh, today, we're showing the S5600, which is our high speed production. Uh, AK solver printer. Uh, it's a CMYK printer, but also gives you the capabilities of white. So it introduce you to uh, window graphics. Okay. White is quite important to you. And then what kind of people uh, tell you would buy this system? Um, Probably um, sign and display companies. Yeah. Signage companies. Okay. But we're also seeing uh, now um, a lot of commercial asset printers getting involved in quite the application format. And is it an easy uh, transition for a commercial offset printer to implement some wide format in their business? Uh, predominantly they have pre-press departments here, yeah. so they understand colours and they understand how to operate grid. So yeah. we've, we've got the skill sets now and how we manage this yeah. now. And implementing a uh, wide format printer and the product yeah. line is quite easy. Yeah. The, the skill sets um, that we're finding is, is the next step on the finishing side yeah. and the installation side. Ah, yeah, okay. So we're a commercial printer uh, and yeah. traditionally see the finished goods come out yeah. from the door. Yeah. There's other skill sets involved yeah. in signage applications. Yeah. Yeah. And where do commercial printers get those skill sets from? Do, you have, do they buy people in or the trade houses yeah. they can that's use? That's what we're yeah. uh, Getting their skill sets or you even um, subcontract them. Yeah, that's, yeah, so they can sub subcontract that side of the work out, can't they? Okay, in terms of this, it prints on light, is that its big selling point? Uh, this particular bottle is yeah. what we call a dual scene okay, so yeah. it's uh, two lots of oh, uh, two. Okay. cartridges and it's our yeah, high production version. So this is part of the S series range, so there's three models uh, in, in the S series range. Yeah. based on uh, an entry level type of machine, yeah. uh, one of our PAs are heads. Okay. Uh, the next model up is this guy with two of our heads, yeah. um, dual just, uh, yeah. And then our top of the range is, uh, is an eight colour configuration. Right. So it's a CMYK light, 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 black and orange. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. With optional metallic silver and white. So it's not a colour gamut okay. and a special effects using metallic and white. And what kind of investment price are we talking about? Uh, entry level, we're looking at eight, 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 Okay, so less than twenty thousand dollars, then you're in the market. Yeah. Okay, terrific. And are they available now? Absolutely. Oh, I tell you, well, it's been great. Thanks for your time. Thanks for So I'm here with Brad Creighton from uh, Mimaki, and uh, Brad, can you tell us what you're sharing on the stand today? Uh, we've got a series of uh, relatively new machines. We've got the JV400 series. Uh, directly behind us is the SUV. Now, this is new technology. Uh, shown originally at Pack Print a couple of months ago. Uh, Mamaki will have stock of this machine um, within the next two weeks. Okay. Okay, and that's when we'll be actually getting it out to the market. Who's it, who's it aimed at? Who's going to buy it? 
traditionally sawing graphics. Um, so your existing eco solvent solvent type market will be uh, seriously interested in this technology. And why would they be interested in this one? Look, the main point of difference is it's a very low eco solvent printer. Um, same sort of properties of your normal eco solvent printers. We use a, a post print, um, a pre post and print heating system. Um, the main difference is this ink SUV has got a UV component. Okay, now what this happens is during the print stage it will come over and you've got this UV component here that will go down and through and will actually cure the ink from the UV portion um, and leaves a very resilient um, abrasive sort of print. And does that mean it's instantly dry? You've got exceptional post-production benefits. So if you'd like to laminate straight away, if you'd like to cut into the ink straight away, all these things can be done. The main thing that we're sort of portraying to the market is just the abrasive and chemical resistance that the roof has got. Uh, you can literally put chemicals directly onto the uh, print and it doesn't affect it. And when I say chemicals, not just alcohols and metho, even partial uh, solvents like turps, potentially even we've even tested an acetone. So it's very, very abrasive. And so what's, what kind of applications do you think this be useful? Um, your traditional signage applications, so self easy vinyls, um, denim materials, um, we can uh, also go on to different products for certain levels of textiles, this is a coated uh, polyester and an uncoated polyester, so uh, those traditional medias that are suitable for the eco and solvent market. And that's why the abrasion is important, because if you're on the wraps on cars or whatever, Need to have some resistance. Look, it, it, it just opens up new opportunities, I suppose, for yeah. the signage market. If you want your long term graphics, we still recommend over laminating. We still recommend putting over laminate down yeah. if, you, if you really want to try and achieve that four to five year yeah. period. But anything that's short term, promotional, uh, real estate signs, transit graphics that only last three to six months. Why, why over laminate if you don't need to? Yeah. The inks are, yeah. Yeah. You don't need to, so you save yourself yeah. time and money. Definitely, that's the idea of this model. Yeah. Uh, if you can, if we're looking at if you can do between 30 and 40 percent of your current work and not need to use an over laminate yeah. form, then this machine yeah. has, has got you know, certain potential. Yeah. Right Jobs out of it all quicker. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay, so you told us a little bit about the technology. The market itself, of course, now you're about to sell on your own in Australia. <laughs> No, well, um, Mamaki Australia definitely setting up a subsidiary, yeah. which we have. Yeah. We'll have an office yet open in Rydal here in the next uh, month or so. Um, oh, look, generally the business model for Mamaki is to support our existing dealer network. Yeah. And Mamaki's got a huge product portfolio. Yeah. You know, we're, we're here talking about the sign graphics market, but they've also got TA, which is textiles and apparel, and IP, which is industrial products. Now these markets, um, have, you know, we're trying to tap into new areas within the Australian market. We've got a good foundation in sign graphics, yeah. um, but industrial products and textile, we believe, you know, there's more of an opportunity. And what, that's, that's what do you mean by industrial products? Look, industrial products is um, more niche type UV tuning uh, uh, products that the market's got out there. So on the other side of the stand, we have got more industrial flatbed UV printers. Um, that are really creating uh, new applications uh, for work. For example, there's one at the back now that we're printing with various different spot inks, primers, that can um, do all sorts of different uh, applications regarding specialty foiling. You know, I've got a, we can already show this, but this type of, this type of foil. So, so, so what you're printing that on the new market? We're printing this, it's a, a primer goes down and then we actually use a, a foil to put onto the primer and it pulls away stays there and then we can put the colour down and then put the clear. So specialty effects but also the primer and a sample that I'll, I'll have to show you just for interest later but literally we're now creating digital etching process. So we use a primer onto stainless steel, uh, we put it into a, a NASA bath, yeah. okay, 
that actually etches the part where the prime is not. So your, your creep pole is normally a negative. Okay, you put it down. When it comes out of the, uh, the acid bath, normally five to ten minutes, depending on the steel and the gauge. Uh, we then just remove the primer, clean it off with an alcohol, and what is left in the, in the areas where the primer wasn't is a nice, beautiful etch. So to be able to do that custom, individual sort of etching process for stainless steel and other items, they're markets that we haven't even tapped into. And they're markets where you can see it's not a commodity market, but it's actually an added value. Definitely with added decent margin. Definitely added value, decent margin, because you're just producing a producing one-off. Yeah. If anyone can produce a one-off of a high-quality product, then there's a potential, and that's what that's what these machines deliver. All right, Brad. Well, thanks very much for your time. Right. It's Excellent. been great. Thanks, Wayne. HP stand with Jeremy Brew. And uh, Jeremy, uh, what's, uh, what's on your stand today? Yeah, so, you know, HP really changed the way we did trade shows a few years ago. Uh, we want to get away from just showing off printers, and we know our printers are funky, we print amazing output, but we really want to give customers an idea of the, uh, I guess, the vast variety of things that you can actually print with a HP device. So um, application focused. Yeah, very much application yeah. focused. So I've actually got three separate application zones on the stand. Uh, we've got one over here off our UV flatbed printers, we have one just behind you there, Wayne, which is digital wall coverings uh, from the latex, and another one at the back of the stand, just with some other, I guess, weird and wonderful things <laughs> off, uh, off latex. You know, we've even printed a synthetic leather jacket <laughs> up there on a material. It's not even a digital stock, but you know, hey, if you can fit through the printer, we're going to go. So your message is about applications, about what people can do with the technology. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's ultimately, 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 ultimately uh, you know, we, our industrial design is built great looking printers. But yeah. Because it looks pretty, you buy it and what comes out of it. You can sell and you can find a market with some customers. And so, the applications that you're talking about, which is more than posters and, and more than signs, is that just something that happens with you guys at trade shows, or is that an actual market that print providers can cash in on out there? Uh, look, it is a reality. Could we yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, yeah, so it's easy vinyls have just become such a commodity now. Yeah. In flatbeds, we see that with core flu, it's just become yeah. commodity printing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the last thing we want is wide format to go the same way as you know, sheet pen, yeah. where it's just a race to zero. Yeah. Um, so, you know, those print service providers and sign shops that are, uh, you know, I guess have, have seen what we're doing and have taken it to the market, are doing very well from it. You know, the digital wall coverings, you know, if you can actually get somebody in the office to put a, a print with full length of their wall, they're never going to go back to a wide right painted wall again. You know, I've got friends who's, you know, who've put up graphics in their kids' bedrooms. Yeah. Yeah, every three years, they're going to be getting a new graphic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. trying in the, uh, I was just saying, office space as well. Yeah. They will be. I mean, where are people, is that where people are finding success? Or is it in the home or is it in the office? And if so, yeah. how do they reach the market? How do they get to those customers? Yeah, so it's, um, we've got a variety of customers that are doing it different ways. Yeah. So we have um, you know, one customer yeah. that I know of here in Melbourne, for example, that their entire business is geared to the consumer wall coverings market. Um, that's how they've set up a, you know, a fairly extensive marketing model to actually go and chase that consumer customer. But I have a lot of internet. Yeah, very much internet focused. We have a lot of uh, a lot of our printers that are you know they're already in the commercial space, so it's about going and addressing those same customers and looking at what else they can print. They can fit out your office. Uh, and we have a number of businesses that just do nothing but commercial fit out. Okay, so, so yeah, you're focused on helping your customers to get to new markets and new business opportunities where there's added value margin. Yeah, so okay, where you make the shekel. That's it. For us, the, the, the printer's only part of the equation. Yeah. You know, it's the ins, it's the media. Yeah. I mean, if you look around the stand, there's only, there's only one media that we've actually got on display that's ours. You know, everything else is from other manufacturers. So we've got Adrian, we've got Apple, we've got, uh, you know, we've got Perfect, which is Spendex as materials. Yeah. We've got visual magnetics, we've got a whole range of acrylics and you know, timbers. So, uh, you know, there's only one media here that's ours. So, you know, HP actively engages with media manufacturers. Um, I mean, it's my role as applications, so we just work with media manufacturers and help our customers find what's that can And in terms of the hardware that you've got on display, there's nothing actually brand new at the show, is there? It's just kind of reiterating what you already have. Yeah, it's nothing that's pretty new. Um, you know, we recently we recently rebranded our latex portfolio. Yeah. Uh, previously, we had the, the some of the latex printers were branded design jets, some were side techs, and latex is really you know it is a big enough business to stand on its own two feet. So we we can now uh, set up all of our latex printers are branded as HP Latex. So 
side. Uh, yeah, this coming here is now the HP Latex 280. And what does Latex refer to? Because it doesn't refer to rubber, does it? Yeah, yeah we actually, uh, actually have nothing in, uh, in common with natural rubber latex whatsoever. Uh, so latex refers to uh, yeah, the chemical construction of the synthetic polymer. It's actually in our inks, it's a lattice effect, and the guys came up with the name latex, and it's stuck in it's made called latex. So it's about the ink. Yeah, it's actually, it's the chemistry in our yeah. And this happens that ink did like in dyes and ink or eco or solvents or UV. Yeah, so, so HP Latex is a water-based pigment, and uh, we've got a synthetic polymer that we've added into that ink. So we use uh, a heat. So in this case, we've got a curing heater here that actually cures the ink. Now, the advantage of that is, as soon as the print's printed, it's ready to go. There's no further outgassing. There's no hanging up prints waiting for them to dry. There's nothing toxic leaking out of it. Once it's printed, it can go. There's no even going onto the back of another back of the roll. No transfer and nothing whatsoever. So we print even when we print textiles, we print directly to the material, and then the yeah. process is the same as if we're printing a banner, a paper, certain things in vinyl. The importance with that is, you know, real estate is so expensive. You know, you don't want to be renting real estate to be hanging up prints to dry. Uh, but then also, this market's become so just in time. Yeah. If someone makes a mistake when they're applying graphic to the car, the last thing I want to do is hit print. <laughs> Wait 48 hours for that to dry, and then laminate it. Now with these, we can print your first thing through a laminator, go and apply it to a car, fully compliant with the manufacturer's warranties. We get exactly the same warranties that they would give an eco software Okay, well, Jeremy, it's a brief interview. Yeah, there is. Thanks very much for your time. What we have here is the Swiss Key Print Niala. It's our 3.2 meter wide flatbed printer. It's also featuring the roll to roll option, which is also 3.2 meters wide. Um, we have this machine configured with double uh, six color. So we have CMYK light cyan, light magenta times two, plus we have white and varnish. On this machine, we have nine color channels. So basically we've got eight channels filled and that leaves us one free. In the future, we could add on things like orange or green or violet ink. We could add on primer, if we want to print onto glass. Um, so there's a whole range of different options that you can actually add on to the machine. You can start just with a basic machine with four colors only and four print heads and then down the track uh, in the future as your business grows, your needs change, you can just uh, spec up the machine, add in more heads, add in more color channels. So it really is the kind of investment that you make once and the machine will continue to grow with you as your business grows. Okay, and what kind of uh, businesses would buy Nyala's for Skew Print? What would they use the machines for? Yeah, um, they're fantastic for any kind of uh, flatbed printing, and that could be ranging anywhere from the sign and graphics industry, which is what this show in particular is um, marketed to, um, where they're printing onto you know, all kinds of sheet products for displays and exhibitions and signage. Um, but it's also ideal for industry type applications as well, where they're printing onto all kinds of uh, different types of materials. Um, and usually it's just the initial process in many other processes that follow to produce a, a, a final product. Um, so basically with the UV curing inks that we have, and especially with the primer that we also have as an option, we're able to print on such a wide variety of products, including things like anodized aluminium and glass and those sort of products. So it really opens up a, a completely, a really wide range. Um, screen printers are another ideal target. Obviously, they're used to dealing with sheet products. They're working with that all the time. Um, but quite often they need to have the ability to print, produce shorter runs um, in uh, faster speeds without the setup times that they would have with screen. Or it could also be uh, a larger run, but with um, e every sheet would be slightly different with different names and variable data and that sort of thing. So, and I've seen, I've seen this machine in commercial printers. Yes. That's obviously a key market. It's here. also another key market, is yeah. It, is it uh, easy for a commercial printer to implement these machines? Yeah, I would say that um, with any of this sort of equipment, probably the biggest learning curve that people have is more around software and files and design rather than actually using the machine. The machine is really easy to use. So we typically find that um, guys in commercial printing where they've got free press departments, all of the file generation and, and dealing with transparencies and overprinting and traps and all that sort of stuff, they deal with every day. So that part of it they've got down pat. Putting the machine in is just like plugging in another little desktop Epson printer and, and producing in a different way. Um, so yeah, the machine itself is incredibly easy to use. 
Um, and um, for those sort of customers, they're, they're up and running uh, literally on the day that we install it, the in production. And then there's Spark etc. It's quite competitive. The Swiss Cupid and the uh, other machines. Yep. Why would people buy the Swiss Cupid? Yeah, um, Swiss Cupid is definitely not the cheapest machine on the market. Um, so when you look at uh, the different types of technology that are around, um, you will see that yeah, there are cheaper offerings, and there's obviously also more expensive offerings. Swiss Q Print really focus on their print quality. Um, so as well as being a, a very fast machine, depending on how it's spec'd, again we could start with a very basic configuration and then as we need more speed add more print heads. Um, but they always focus on the quality. So even in our, our cheapest product, um, or our lower, uh, easiest entry point from a cost point of view, right up until the very top end, the print quality across the complete range is the same. And the print quality is really what they focus on. It's just really wanting to be the best that they can be for print quality. Uh, so when it comes to choosing a flatbed printer, there's a few things that you need to consider. Obviously budget is one of them, uh, but it's also the return on investment. How many sheets are you going to be able to produce uh, of usable product that you're going to be able to sell? That's a big, key factor. The reliability of the machine is another key factor. If you've got a machine that can produce you know, a massive amount of sheets per day, but it's unreliable, obviously that affects your return on investment. And Swiss Print have proven themselves over the last 12 months in the Australian market and over the last five years in the worldwide market as an incredibly reliable machine. Uh, all of our customers are using these machines uh, every day, you know, hours and hours a day. Um, it's not the sort of machine that likes to sit around and, and not do anything. It's, they're designed for productivity. And that's what they're really good at. They're also great from a point of view that it's a true flatbed printer. So when you put the sheets onto the table, they're sucked down with the vacuum and the sheets don't move. So for print registration and accuracy, um, it's very hard to compete with a, a true flatbed printer. Um, and it's one of the selling points that we feel is, uh, is good about this. Okay, fantastic. All right, thanks very much for your time. No problem. So I'm, I'm with Peter DeMarc at uh, DGS, Digital Graphic Supplies. We're on his booth here at uh, the Visual Impact Image Expo. And uh, Peter, do you want to tell us what we're standing in front here? Okay, this is a range of printers by a Chinese company called Hantop. Components of these machines are mainly German, um, USA, and the print heads on these machines are premium grade heads from uh, Japanese manufacturers, for example. The nice thing about this technology is it's expandable. We put Rico Generation 4 or 5 print heads in the machine. Cryocera is a new thing that we're doing, which is extremely fast in Polaris print heads for those people who don't have a race car. Okay. This machine here at the moment, for example, is running Rico Generation print heads with 7 picolet dot size. It's a hybrid. The hybrid printer enables you to print onto roll media, and with a table you can print okay. accurately uh, on, uh, on flat sheets. So they're printing on rigid stock and on roll and, and roll stock. And in the background we actually have machines that are dedicated to flatbed machines. You know, uh, same principle, you can actually start, for example, with this smaller machine over here, you can start with two heads, yeah. three heads, five yeah. heads, or seven heads. Yeah. So you can have CMYK yeah. only, CMYK white, yeah. dual CMYK white clear, so like any combination. So you can start small and build your way up? Exactly. So we call it part of the IQ range, and yeah. IQ is a brand that we have trademarked, yeah. and this actually fits within the IQ uh, range. So, these machines are basically, we purchase the body of the machines and we assemble the heads in Australia on, on okay. these machines and configure them to custom yeah. requirements. So they can, yeah, they can order the specification. They can. So they know how high quality they want, what kind exactly. of they want. Exactly. And which kind of people, businesses will buy this machine? Well, uh, in this market, for example, with this machine, this is an ideal printer for printing wallpaper with UV oh. ink on wall, textured wallpaper yeah. materials. But also, it's ideal for a sign guy, and a sign guy can start in a machine like this for around a hundred, under a hundred thousand dollars, which is 2.5 meters wide. Yeah. It will give him roll-to-roll -roll capability and the ability to print directly onto yeah. a flat sheet. So that's the SG guy who can't afford an expensive machine. Yeah. Okay. And then he can build up to somewhere else. If yeah. he can so you truly can, on this hybrid machine, because it uses a belt with a back here, yeah. you can truly print edge to edge on a, on a, on a sheet up to 50 feet of the and is it, is it a UV printer? This is UV. Uh, at the moment it's um, metal halide technology, but it can also be adapted to LED. Because okay. you probably can't see, but we're standing on a piece of wallpaper here. Exactly. And I guess, I guess with wallpaper there needs to be kids 
Exactly. Coffee and everything you need well, to be yeah, protected. The, from the, the key thing with this is yeah. it's uh, no VOC. Okay. Okay, so you don't need to have a special extractor pan no. to use this. No. I mean, we're standing here, we can't smell anything, can we? No. So, so it's yeah, UV not solid. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And in terms of uh, DGS, Peter, is this uh, your range now, or do you sell other products yeah. as well? No, this is this is part of our range. We also do the ATP. This is a uh, director textile printer. Okay, and is that a growing market? Yeah, soft That's signage fine. is a growing market. Um, the unique thing about this machine is that it's an onboard calendar, so yeah. printing directly to the fabric and a calendar in one operation. So, um, and what do you mean by the calendar? A cal normally when you print on the textile, you still need to take it to the calendar yeah. to actually uh, have the sublimation process take place to heat. Yeah. Okay. So what happens, you're printing directly onto the fabric yeah. and then you're heating it yeah. and then what happens, the ink becomes a gaseous state and beds itself into the fabric. Yeah. Okay. So what happens with this, it's done in a one uh, oh, okay. stage operation, so print yeah. and calendar okay. in one go. Okay. And are both these machines available now to buy? They are. They are. Yeah. This machine's been sold to a customer. Okay. Castlist yeah. Graphics? Yes. Oh yeah, we know Castlist. Yeah. yeah, so it's been sold and it will be delivered to them uh, shortly. Okay. So, um, and then we have a range of mounting machines yeah. and laminating machines, which are modular. So in other words, customers again, yeah. part of the IQ Smart Technology, yeah. you can start with a table size of 2 metres, extended to 3 metre, uh, in metre lengths, yeah. with light or without light, so it's completely expandable. And the idea is with these tables, you can fit them through a doorway, you know, because oh, okay, they're rather yeah. large. And yeah. Some of the other products are one yeah. piece design, yeah. make it very difficult. Yeah. Okay. And that's handy, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. And here, also over here, we have the uh, text print, uh, t shirt printers from Polyprint out yeah. of Greece. And this product is, uh, we actually assessed this product over an eight month period before we gave it the IQ standard yeah. of approval. Yeah. And this product uh, now has gone into uh, a site, uh, a franchise site. Yeah. Extremely reliable, and what we look for for a t shirt printer running white, that you can turn it off uh, for a number of days and turn it back on and yeah. print. And that's pretty much true of this technology yeah. as well. You can turn it off because these machines have an uninterrupted power supply. Yeah. That means that the ink is always ready. For yeah, function. so you don't have to unplug it and yeah. clean it out. Okay. That's right. And what yeah. kind of price do you pay for a t-shirt? T-shirt for that, 20, around the 22,995. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Low entry cost. Low entry cost, yeah. yes. Yeah. All right. Well, Peter, thanks no, very much for your time. No problem. So, there you have it. A great day at the show. Plenty going on. The message is clear. You've got to go into different applications, niche markets, and the margins are there. Plenty of technology to see. Check out the suppliers. This is Wayne Robinson, Australian printer at Homebush.